Friends, thank you for joining with us again, like this, as we worship together. Welcome. Welcome. It's good to be with you as we yes. gather from each other's homes to thank God for his faithfulness and his goodness and to acknowledge his presence in our lives. That's so important, isn't it? Yes. God is good mm. all the time. All the time. God is good. And we need to remember that, don't we? Yeah. So Happy New Year. This is our first online service in 2021 and we do hope and pray that you had a good mm. and a blessed Christmas despite all we've been facing and of course with the news this week of yet another national lockdown we continue to do all we can to look after each other and to reach out to one another in these increasingly tough days for many and we pray for all of those who are in hospital and for all those who are caring for them just now. Yes, those people are certainly on our minds yes. so much in these days and in our prayers. So, in one of our very first online services, nearly 10 months ago now, wow. can you believe that? <laughs> wow, 10 <laughs> months ago, we, we held these cups up, these mugs, with the words love and, and joy. joy written on them. Do you remember? So here's a quote about love. God is love. He loves us and he pursues us with his love. And here's another. Let us always meet each other with a smile, for the smile is the beginning of love. And of course, the, the problem nowadays is that we can't see people smile. So the new smile is a thumbs up or, or eyes sparkling. Um, so friends, lots of love and prayers just now. So here are some quotes about joy. We cannot cure the world of sorrows, but we can choose to live in joy. And then one of my favourites has to be, joy is the echo of God's love within us. Yeah, I, I love that. Yeah, and I, I think that's by one of the Wesleys, that yeah, quote. Yeah, I yeah. think it is. So friends, choose joy today. And that is sound advice, which we find in scripture. So let's put love and joy together. Love joy. And, and, and I'm not talking about the TV comedy in the late 1980s. Do you remember that? No, I'm too young. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> love and joy. One worship song says, forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. And another line says, I will sing for joy at the work of your hands. The song is my Jesus, my saviour. So let's join together in worship. First, sharing in a prayer which Mark made a few weeks back by the sea. And it's a good prayer for these early days of 2021. And then let's sing together and worship. This is the God we adore. Our faithful, unchangeable friend, whose love is as great as his power and knows neither measure nor end. Tis Jesus, the first and the last, whose spirit shall guide us safe home. We'll praise him for all that is past and trust him for all that's to come. Amen.
nothing compares to the promise I have in you. And we claim that wonderful promise that Jesus gave to us before he left this earth, found in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20. And I will be with you always. And during that song, our collection of cups and mugs has grown. Um, multiplying mugs, I think you call them. Um, we've got so many of them and lots of them have been given to us as presents over the years. I think that's what you give to people when they get <laughs> old. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I've got one here of some musical instruments and, and another one of football images. They're two of my hobbies. Did you know I was a musical footballer? And, and this one's even got my name in as well, just in case I forget who I am. This is a Starbucks mug and it's from the first Starbucks store in a Pike Place in Seattle, which we went to. Yeah, and, and this one's from the training college with our logo on. Um, when we were there, we were the Crusaders for Christ session. And there's a scripture on this side that says, put on the full armor of God. This mug I got for this Christmas actually as a gift and I absolutely love it. And it says on it, I am so many things. And then inside, as you're drinking your tea or coffee, it reads, I am God's very good idea. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am pleasing to my heavenly father. I am outrageously loved. I am not alone. I am a child of God. And at the bottom it says, I am the apple of God's eye. Great mugs. Lovely. That's good. And I got this one for this Christmas too, um, from someone in our fellowship with the picture of the eagle on and the scripture from Isaiah. Those who wait upon the <laughs> Lord will renew their strength. They will rise on wings as eagles. And then this one here says on it, simply, you are brilliant. I bought that one for you, didn't I, darling? No, I think you bought it for yourself, actually. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> and listen, hidden amongst these mugs is, is another one here with two faces on it. Can you see that little sad face there with some tears? And then on the other side, there's a happy face with rosy cheeks and a big smile. On the bottom of the, this cup, it has a description. It's called Jolly Sad. Hey, can you be jolly sad? Can, can you be sadly jolly? But as I look at these emotions, I realise that we all, from time to time, have different feelings, don't we? Even during this time that we've been going through, there are times when we feel quite sad and anxious and worried. Things are tough at times. But there are other times when we see God's blessing, when we're encouraged by others and life feels good and the light is shining and we smile. Uh, these moments, these feelings are known by God. He, he understands everything we're going through and he knows us better than we know ourselves. I'm reminded of a verse from a little town of Bethlehem, which says, Yet in the dark streets shineth the everlasting light, the hopes and the fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. And, and talking of two faces, that describes the Roman god called Janus, which the month of January derives its name from. Now he was the god of beginnings and endings, life and death, past and present. One face looks back and the other looks forward. And we do that, don't we, at the start of a new year? And we also sing a song about cups and, yes. and mugs, yes. Old Lang Syne, which talks about a cup of kindness yes. for yes. the sake of Old Lang Syne, which means for old times. We do thank God, don't we, for those who have been good and kind to us in the past. Yes. And we want to pass on that legacy, that cup of kindness, yes. uh, uh, of love uh, and of joy to others in our doing and in our being every day. May God help us, may God help me, may God help you to be more loving, joyful and kind in 2021 so we can be the difference yeah. mm. that we want to see in the world. Absolutely. And in all of that, we give thanks to the one true living God, the author and finisher of our faith, the giver of time and life, thanking him for lessons learnt from the past mm. and stepping forward into each new day, aware of his unfailing love and trusting him for all that yeah. is to come, which is what you prayed about earlier, isn't it? Yeah, when I was by the sea. Yeah. 
So friends, together, as one, in unity, let's worship him with a song accompanied by our virtual brass group, Lord for the Years. Yeah, for Christ, for, yeah. for Jesus, the one born in a manger, visited by shepherds and wise men from the East. Many denominations um, in other parts of the world celebrate the visit of the wise men and the Magi in a really dramatic way. Um, this time of year is called the season of Epiphany and it goes on until February. In many countries it's a time of feasting. They eat a king's cake. Um, oh, we, we can't eat anymore, <laughs> yeah, can we? Um, we'll leave that one to the side, um, or maybe not. And, and uh, the men, listen to this, the men dress up as kings and go to church dressed as wise men. Wow, we can try that, That's couldn't we, idea. next year? Yeah, that would be good. Epiphany celebrates the revelation of God coming to earth as human being, Jesus Christ. It commemorates the visit of the Magi, the wise men, who searched and found Jesus following the bright Bethlehem star. And when they found him, they worshipped him. God was at work revealing Jesus, the King of Kings, the Saviour of the world. And these visitors, who were Gentiles, not Jews, worshipped him and bowed before him, presenting their gifts. This was an epiphany, mm. the revelation. God loved the whole world, not just a select few or a certain class or a particular race. God loves every person, every man and woman, boy and girl. He loves you. Indeed, God loves the whole world, the cosmos, the universe that he gave Jesus. The greatest gift, the greatest present the world has ever seen for you and for me. That's how valuable, that's how special you are to the King of creation. Mm. And from the beginning of time, God was preparing us for this event mm. and this revelation and epiphany. Can we remind you of the story of David, mm. the shepherd boy who became a king? 
This happened a thousand years before Jesus was born. But listen out for references to a place called Bethlehem, a king and three wise men. Watch the video and let it fill you with wonder as you see God's plan and purpose revealed. And then together we will sing the carol as with gladness men of old. You, you know what's good about Epiphany is it gives us a reason to stretch out yes. the Christmas celebration for just a little longer. Um, I and mean, we even have our Christmas trees yes. still here, don't we? Well, we've taken down the Christmas decorations, but we've put on hearts. Yeah, I think that's going to be lovely all year round. And, and after the carol, we'll hear from a wise man. His name is Matthew, and he's a member of our fellowship here at Norwich Citadel. He's part of our leadership team. He's going to start a feature that will continue over the coming weeks and months with people sharing their hopes for 2021 and a scripture verse with us. First, do watch the video. And uh, have we got any of that King's cake? We've eaten it all. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. The teeny weeny true king. God's people had a new land. Now they wanted a king. But God is your king, Samuel told them. He is the one who looks after you best. But we want a real king, they said, one we can see. God knew that a king might not be kind to his people or look after them as well as he would. But God's people didn't care. They wanted a king and they wanted him now. So God gave them a king. He was called Saul, and he seemed like a good king at first, but he became proud and stopped listening to God. He didn't obey God or love God with his whole heart. Saul can't help me with my plan, God said. I need a king who loves me and will teach my people to love me. I need a true king. God had just the one in mind. Go to Bethlehem, God told Samuel. You'll find the new king there. Samuel's job was to listen to God and tell people what God said. So Samuel went to the little town of Bethlehem. God told Samuel to go to Jesse's house. God was going to choose one of Jesse's sons to be the new king. Jesse had seven strong sons. Now, in those days, if you were going to be the king, you didn't have to be the richest or the cleverest, although that was always nice. You had to look like a king, which meant you had to be the tallest and the strongest. So you could carry the longest swords and biggest armor and defeat everyone. And it didn't hurt to be handsome either. Samuel asked Jesse to bring him each son in turn. So Jesse brought the oldest, tallest, strongest son. Oh, well, this must be the new king, Samuel thought. He looks like a king, but God didn't choose him. You're thinking about what he looks like on the outside, God told Samuel, but I'm looking at his heart, what he's like on the inside. So Jesse showed Samuel his next oldest, tallest, strongest son. But God didn't choose him either. In fact, God didn't choose any of the seven sons. Samuel said, is that all? Jesse laughed. Oh, well, there's the youngest one, but he's just the weakling of the family. He's only teeny. Bring him, said Samuel. Jesse's youngest son came running up and God spoke quietly to Samuel. This is the one. His name was David. He has a heart like mine, God said. It is full of love. He will help me with my secret rescue plan. And one of his children's children's children will be the king. And that king will rule the world forever. Samuel anointed David's head with oil, which was a special way to show that you are God's chosen king. You will be the new king one day, 
Samuel told him. And sure enough, when he grew up, David became king. God chose David to be king because God was getting his people ready for an even greater king who was coming. Once again, God would say, go to Bethlehem. You'll find the new king there. And there, one starry night in Bethlehem, in the town of David, three wise men would find him. It's great to be with you this morning. Let me just say that to know so many of you are watching is a real source of encouragement to everybody who invests so heavily into this online worship experience. So thank you, and I mean thank you for supporting in the way in which you do. And of course, we acknowledge the people that make this possible too. One of the slogans which uh, always makes me smile at uh, this time of the year is new year new me and that normally sits on the back of some exercise uh, regime or fitness routine uh, and perhaps sometimes even a diet i uh, often laugh at the person who published uh, first of january uh, this year i'm going to lose a stone first of july just one and a half stones to go well We've all had to learn something new and become the new me, haven't we, since this pandemic. Um, we've all had to learn to live differently and uh, that continues, uh, certainly with the news that we've had this week. New ways to communicate, new ways to work, new ways to cope and new ways to worship. They're not all for the worst. My hope for 2021 is that what we have discovered in 2020 and through the pandemic to make us more effective, to make us more efficient, helped us to think differently, changed our outlook. All of those things may not be forgotten. And then we end up returning to a degree of what we knew before. And I wondered how long it will be before somebody is angry because they're having to queue up at the airport to check in for their holiday. 
or perhaps somebody's a bit grumpy because they're stuck in a traffic jam on the way to the army or maybe even find themselves complaining about having to go to the army meeting at all. I guarantee it will happen not long post pandemic and when we're back to some degree of normality. Let me give you some words from Isaiah and chapter 43 verses 18 and 19. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. I am doing a new thing. New springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Words of encouragement to give us hope for 2021. Change is inevitable. I pray that we will embrace it and remember the many promises of God. Happy New Year. Thank you, Matthew, for your encouraging and wise words. And did you spot the reference to, to the wise men and the kings in the video? The coming of the wise men was all about God's timing. It was the fulfillment of prophecy and at the heart of it was God's planning for the salvation of the world. God's rescue plan, a revelation, an epiphany for us all. We read in Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 2, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, to search out a matter is the glory of kings. Now that's an interesting verse, isn't it, and concept. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't help but think of the posters that we used to see at Christmas outside churches saying, the wise men sought Jesus, wise men still yeah. do. Mm -hmm. Now I would change that slightly, and um, not just wise men search, for Jesus, but wise people, people. Um, not just men. I like it because it says at least two things. Those who seek God are wise. God affirms the dignity of the searcher and the search. The fact that God has set it up this way, has concealed his matters and invited us to search for him, confirms our ability, doesn't it? It says we have enough in us to search for him and recognise him when we find him. Yes, as the wise men did. In fact, the proverb puts the searcher in the realms of kings. Wow, it's a noble task to seek after God. Now, now there's an incredible royal thought. And secondly, those who seek God are given the benefit of the doubt that if they seek him, they will find him. This is actually a promise in scripture. We read in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse six, he rewards those who earnestly seek him. If people are truly seeking, they will find him and God will open their eyes and they will have an epiphany. Friends, may God continue to open your eyes, mm -hmm. our eyes, the eyes of our hearts to his awesome word. Yeah his truth and his trustworthy promises. We would be wise, yes. I believe, to let him do that. So let's have two very different worship moments. Um, listen, so many people of all ages watch our services and join with us, different personalities, different characters, and with that comes preferred ways of worship too. We get that. Um, so let's together um, imagine that we're a searcher a seeker looking for Jesus in a, in a sense we all are aren't we we never stop doing that on our journey of faith and life looking for Jesus and so like the wise travelers long ago we acknowledge the presence of Jesus and we bring our, our gift the gift of worship and devotion in two very different songs just now the first is the way it's going to be with movement and actions and energy and life um, with reference to stars as well. And after that lively song, we will hear another song by our virtual songsters here from Norwich Citadel, None mm. But The Lord. Picture yourself kneeling and bring the gift of your life to Jesus, the King of Kings asking him to shine on you. So friends, together from our homes, let's be wise and worship Jesus. So, so get ready with this first song. There's lots of actions and energy and exercise moments. 
Do you remember the wise words of Major Motivator? We've got to keep active and we have to, especially in lockdown, don't we? So let's together worship God.
Friends, we hope you enjoyed those moments of response and worship. And I'm sure that many of you will have joined in with both of those songs, expressing your faith in different ways. Um, we do thank God for songs like that, those lively, energetic songs, as well as those worship devotional songs that help us to express our feelings in different ways. Do look at the story of the wise man. It's found in Matthew chapter 2. Um, study it yourself and uh, as you read it, and as you take it all in, allow God to reveal new truths yes. to you so that another epiphany may come. Yeah. Those travellers followed the star, the one star, the right star, and it led them to Jesus. The Bible says in Philippians 2 um, verse 15, you must shine like stars, it says, yeah. in the universe as you hold out the word of God. That's amazing, isn't it? We are like stars. I guess that's what that song yeah. that we've just <laughs> seen um, acted out with our children says. We must be a bright yeah. star shining. May God help us all to do that in a brighter, in a more intentional way as we step into these early days of 2021. Yeah. Another important lesson is this wise men still seek him. Friends keep seeking Jesus and remember what he said when he grew up. Seek first the kingdom of God and he promised that if you seek you will find as those wise men did long ago. And what was the greatest gift they gave? We're accustomed to thinking that the greatest gift of the Magi was gold and frankincense and myrrh but it wasn't. The greatest gift they brought was their devotion, their willingness to endure whatever it took to look as long as they could to find what God had promised them through the sign. Their physical gifts paled in comparison. Absolutely, and they fell face down. The original word in the Bible means prostrate. They literally knelt with their heads on the floor before Jesus, giving all that they were in, in, in what I would describe as holy abandonment. Every desire, every ambition, every hope, every dream and every prayer was wrapped up in that moment to the one they were adoring, oh. Jesus Christ, our Lord oh. and our Saviour. Yeah. Friends, may we do the same, even now in this God-gifted, precious moment from the sanctuary of your own home, as Bethany from our fellowship at Norwich Citadel shares with us her hopes for 2021 and then sings a beautiful song, mm -hmm. helping us to give of ourselves to a God who has done so much for us. Thanks, Bethany. Hi, everybody, and Happy New Year. My hopes for 2021 is simply just to stay positive and to be able to share that positivity and happiness with friends and family, whether that be over Zoom or social media or, of course, in person when we are allowed. After the year that we've all experienced, we should be able to celebrate our achievements. We may not have been able to accomplish everything we had planned or in the way we had planned to do them, but it's the path that God has created and we should trust that this is right. Hebrews 11 verse 1 to 3 says the fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God this faith is a firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living it's our handle on what we can't see the act of faith is what distinguished our ancestors and set them above the crowd by faith we see the world called into existence by God's word what we see created by what we don't see we may not be able to see each other right now in person and we may not be able to see the year that lies ahead of us. However, I trust that this is the right plan for us and that we can share our positivity and happiness with each other along the way. The song I'm about to sing talks about the guidance God has provided us and how he uses us in our day to day lives. As you listen, remember that there is a definite plan for each and every one of us even though we might not be able to see it at the start of this new year. Here is Potter's Hand. I cry, oh Lord, please take my hand. You call
wafted into your perfect plan. You gently call me into your presence, guiding me by. Your Holy Spirit, teach me, dear Lord, to live all of my life. Beautiful Lord, wonderful Saviour, I know for sure all of my days are held in your hands, crafted into your perfect plan. You gently call me into Friends, let's pray together. Let's take a moment and be still. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would play my part. Yet what can I give him? Give, give him, him my heart. heart. Lord, hear the desire of our hearts. Amen. Amen. Friends, we hope this time has been helpful and meaningful for you. 
And can we remind those from Norwich City Dool that our pastoral letter is this week attached to this video um, with news and prayer topics and devotions. Next week we'll be back to normal with those letters being emailed and sent. And there's also resources and devotions for all of you with this video. And they'll be back again um, on our Facebook page next week too, along with our online service like this, which will be available from 10.30 again. Above all, and to all of you, keep looking out for each other mm. and keep connected, keep shining. It's incredibly important in these days. And here's a challenge. Three people today. Yeah, um, three gifts we've thought yep. about in the story of the wise men, haven't we? Mm. And uh, three gifts, three people. Absolutely. Yeah. And give them some encouragement. Be a blessing to someone today. And here's the thing as you bless others, I know that you'll be blessed too. Mm. We're all blessed to be yes. a blessing. Friends, we've thought about this incredible epiphany worship moment experienced by these travellers from the East, these Magi who've become known as the Kings and the Wise Men. Here's a wonderful thought-provoking quote from a book called A Basket of Gems, and it really is a gem. It's about worship, written by um, Jack W. Hayford, who is a very old pastor and uh, preacher from America. And, and he wrote this some 30, 40 years ago, long before COVID-19. And as we read it in the context that we're living through today, it, it's so provoking um, and meaningful. He says, what has been defined for too long as an hour's exercise on Sunday, packaged by enculturated tradition, and preserved in doctrinaire posturing is being redefined, unwrapped and unsealed today. Worship is being redefined in terms of its form and its focus. It isn't that valid traditions must be scorned or discarded, but that newness must refill them with meaning. Wow, there's a thought, there's a, a revelation, an epiphany. Absolutely. Friends, may your whole life, 24-7, be given as a worship offering, as a precious gift to God, as you serve him today and always, making a difference and being the difference in 2021 and forever. That would be awesome. And talking of awesome, here's some of our wonderful children at Norwich Citadel singing Who Would Imagine a King? It fits in so well with our theme today and gives us an opportunity to hear it one more time and then put it away in our Christmas file for next year. <laughs> Friends, be blessed and encouraged and be wise. Be wise and keep seeking. Yeah. Bye. Bye.